About a couple of weeks ago, Google announced the agent to agent protocol and they're saying it's a new era of agent interoperability. So as we all know, enterprises are increasingly building and deploying autonomous agents to help scale, automate and enhance processes throughout the workplace. And to maximize the benefit of agentic AI, it's critical for these agents to be able to collaborate in a dynamic multi-agent ecosystem. So to understand the problem, let's understand what is the problem with the current agent frameworks. We already have too many of them. For example, we have Crew AI, we have Google ADK, but we also have Langchain and we also have Autogen. What's the need for A to A then? So let's say we run a travel agency and you've got two agents, agent one and agent two. Say this is probably booking your hotel and this is, you know, booking your flight. And let's say you have developed these two agents using Crew AI and you want to interface with say a bank. You want to connect with the bank. More specifically, you want to communicate with a bank, which is also running an agent and it has got access to all sensitive information about customers. But all that you want back from this agent is let's say a credit score about a traveler so that you can decide whether the traveler you know can afford a business class or you want some other sensitive details financial details and the bank is not interested in exposing all of the details about this customer and on top of that the bank has developed its agent using google adk which is a completely different framework compared to Crew AI. In order to enable a seamless communication between these three agents, you need a protocol, and that is where the A2A protocol comes into play. So that's what they're saying here. A2A is enabling agents to interoperate with each other, even if they were built with different vendors, different frameworks, they will all work increasingly autonomously and multiply productivity gains. So regardless of the underlying technology, agents can seamlessly collaborate to automate complex enterprise workflows. So one of the next questions that arrives is that Anthropic has already got model context protocol or MCP, which is getting increasingly popular. And why do we even need A2A, which is another open protocol? They're clearly saying that A2A is a protocol that complements Anthropic's model context protocol. So what this means is that, you know, A2A is kind of goes hand in hand with MCP. For the TLDR, they have clearly said that agentic applications need both A2A and MCP. And it's not that they are competing with each other, but they're complementing each other. So they recommend MCP for tools and A to A for agents. So to go back to our three agents that are communicating, these agents might want to use some tools. For example, they may want to use the browser, may want to use the GitHub, or they may want to access files from Google Drive. So these are all the different tools. And in order to communicate with these tools, we still need MCP and irrespective of whether it's agent one or agent two or agent three, we need MCP in order to communicate with these tools. Given that these agent one and two are from one enterprise and agent three is from a different enterprise, if you want them to seamlessly communicate with each other, then we need A2A. So this is a nice diagram they have given there in their documentation. So we have got this uh, blue agent and we've got this uh, other two agents, which is a black box agent one and black box agent two. For this agent to communicate with these two agents, we need A2A protocol. In order to access all the tools and resources, we still need a MCP server running for these tools and the agent will communicate through the MCP server. So in terms of how it works, they're saying it follows a client server architecture in that we have a client agent and a remote agent and the client agent is responsible for formulating and communicating the task that the remote agent has to do and the remote agent is responsible for acting on those tasks and in doing this the Interaction involves few capabilities like capability discovery. For example, the agent can advertise their capabilities using an agent card in JSON format. So let's have a look at this nice diagram. We have the remote agent and we have the client agent. And this remote agent in green can advertise saying that, you know, these are my capabilities. I can serve you this and that. And it will keep publishing that in a JSON format. And the client agent, if it wants to make use of that agent, is going to securely collaborate with the remote agent. So the client will have the ability to schedule some tasks and manage those tasks. And it also has the ability for user experience negotiation. Each message includes parts, which is a fully formed 
piece of content like a generated image. So each message between the client and the remote agent will include parts and these parts will have a specific content type and the client and the agent will negotiate the correct format needed to include and explicitly include negotiations of the user's UI capabilities. So that's pretty much how the agents communicate at the high level. And so they are saying that this way of A2A communication has the potential to unlock new era of interoperability. And so they believe that this protocol will pave the way for uh, future agents to seamlessly collaborate and solve complex problems and enhance our lives. And they've also given us uh, code samples to try out. So with that overview of uh, A2A, let's jump into some hands-on coding and try out their demo. Let's start by creating a Conda environment. I'm calling it A2A demo and I'm using Python 3.12. So once we run that, we are creating a new Conda environment and say yes, and that is done. So I'm going to activate the Conda environment. So now that the Conda environment is activated, I'm now going to check out the GitHub repository. We're now going to clone the A2A repository because we've got the demo inside the A2A repository itself. So let's just download the A2A protocol repository. I'm just going to go here, copy the link, and I'm going to do git clone, and I'm going to check out the A2A repository. So that's done, and I can go into A2A. I can see the demo directory here. Let's switch to VS Code from here. You can choose any other code editor, but I've chosen VS Code. So if I click on open folder to the code that we just checked out, which is A2A, and I'm just going to open that. Now that we have opened the folder, we can navigate inside that. For example, I can open the main.py and the next step is to set the environment that we just created. So I'm just going to do command shift P and going to select the interpreter and I'm going to choose A to A demo that we just created. Now that the virtual environment is sorted, I'm going to open the terminal. And in the terminal, I'm going to activate the virtual environment. So I've now activated the virtual environment as well. Whatever we install here, we will be doing in the A to A demo virtual environment. So if we go back to the repository, they have given the link to the technical documentation details for, for getting started. And if we visit the documentation, we can see that they are using UE for everything. For example, UE init, and we need to initialize the package for the project and even the virtual environment they're creating using UE. So let's install UE first with Conda. We're doing slightly differently. So we're going to do Conda install minus C Conda forge UE minus Y. So that's going to install UE for us. So as the next step, let's navigate the package and see what we've got basically. So we've got the samples here. So under the samples, we've got Python and under the Python, we can say we have agents, we have crew AI agent, and we have Google ADK agent, and we have Langraph agent as well. Let's basically run them and make sure they coordinate with each other through the A2A protocol. So let's start with crew AI. I'm going to CD into samples, Python and crew AI, agents and crew AI. So we have the same files as here. So now in order for this to communicate, in order for the crew AI to communicate Google ADK and also for Google ADK to communicate with Langraph, they all need to have the Google API key. So this is where I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it .env. And inside that, I'm going to say Google API key. And I'm going to set my API key here. Similarly, we need to do for the other ones. I'm going to go under Google ADK. I'm going to do a new file and I'm going to do .env. And I'm going to say Google API key and I'm going to set it here. Similarly, under Langraph, I'm also going to create a new file and I'm going to call it .env and I'm going to do Google API key and I'm going to set it there. So to create an API key, basically we need to go to aistudio.google.com and under that we can see get API key is on the top. If we click on that, we can generate a new API key. I have a few of them. 
Otherwise, if we still want an API key, we can create on the API key. We can then select a project which is already existing. I'm just going to say Gemini API and I'm going to create a new API key. So once that API key is created, we need to just come back here and then paste it. So obviously I'm going to delete this API key once this video is complete. Similarly, I'm going to go here and stick it in and I'm going to go here and stick it in. I'm going to save all of them. Now that the environment is sorted, we are now ready to run all of the agents in different frameworks. So now that we have sorted out the environment and we are under the crew AI folder under the samples Python agents crew AI. So basically we are going to activate or we are going to run the crew AI agent. All that we have to do is uv run dot. So that has pretty much installed all the needed package. So we can see that it's preparing all the packages and it's building it. It's so quick actually. So it's installed 204 packages in 400 odd milliseconds and it's all set. It's running in this port, which is 10,001. So I'm going to now open a different terminal. This is a new terminal. I'm going to activate the Conda environment, which will be A to A demo again. And I'm going to go into samples, Python agents, this time into Google ADK agent. And here I'm going to say again, UV run dot. It's installed 28 packages in 42 milliseconds. And it's running in this port, which is 10,002. And the crew AI is running in 10,001. And let's open another terminal. Let's activate the A2A demo environment. And we can go into samples, Python, agents, and this time into LangGraph. And we can obviously do a UV run dot. And that's again install 10 packages in 7 milliseconds. This kind of gives also an indication as to how easy things are with LangGraph compared to Crew AI. We can we saw that Crew AI installation took about 400 milliseconds, and with the uh, and with the Google ADK it was slightly higher. But with LangGraph we can see it's 10 packages in seven milliseconds. That's really fast, and we already have this one running here locally on this port. Now that the three agents from three frameworks are running locally we can open another terminal we can activate the conda environment and this time we will go to the demo and there's a nice ui there so ui and we can see the main file for our user interface so i'm just going to quick start that as well so uv run main.py installing the needed packages for that and it, it's installed 98 packages in 400 milliseconds and it is running in this port which is 12,000 and it's saying waiting for application startup complete meaning that the application is now running in this port. It's going to open that and we can see that it is asking for the Google API key again. I'm going to just plug it in and then I'm going to save it. And then on the left, we can see home and the agents, event list and task list. I can go to agents and here, if we just click on that, it's asking for the address of the agent. For example, it is showing localhost 10,000. All I need to do is localhost and I think it's 10,002. So the address of crew AI is 10,001. And for Google ADK agent is 10,002. And for the LangGraph agent is 10,000. So let's stick that in. Let's start with crew AI is 10,001, 10,001, read. And we could see that it's an image generator agent. I'm just going to save that. And again, I'm going to add another one, which will be in localhost 10002, read. And it's saying it's reimbursement agent, save that. And I'm going to add one more, I think, I believe, which is in 10,000. So I'm going to do read and it's saying it's currency agent. And I'm going to save that. So we have the list of three agents which are running in three different ports. Now that all the agents are added on the top left, we can see home and it says conversations and there's a plus sign here. So if I click on that, how can I help you? It's asking, how can I help you? And I can just say, what are the agents at our disposal? So it's working. We have the following agents available, image generator agent, reimbursement agent, and currency agent. So the next question I asked is, what does the currency agent do? And the answer I got was the currency agent helps with exchange rates for currencies. And then asked, what is the exchange rate between USD and GBP? Then it came up with the answer that the current exchange rate is one USD equals 
0.75158 GBP. And if I go to Google and look at the conversion between USD to GBP, I can see that it's 0.75. So it's got that right. So with that, I'm pretty much wrapping up this demo of the uh, A2A protocol. I hope that was useful and I will see you in my next video. Until then, take care.